Come on in, y'all. Hey. Come on, come on, come on. It's ASCAP Urban. Come on in, y'all. Come on in, y'all. Give y'all a little time to come in. I see you, brother. Let's go. My name is T.L. Cross, and we're going to have an amazing conversation with Keon Harold. I mean, this is going to be crazy. This is important. This is important. So I'm here. We here. Hit him with a little vocal. Now let's bring uh let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. Hey, 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 hey. I'm kinda known for this uh this music right here. coming in. I see. Oh man, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Brother, what's going on? Yo, yo, what's up, man? How are you? Man, I'm doing amazing. I'm excited. I'm happy. You know, I'm a fan. I'm sitting here talking to 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 to, to music and jazz and hip hop royalty, man. So let's jump right into it, man. Welcome. Hey, my pleasure, man. How you feeling today? Listen, man, I feel great. You know, we we um you know, to for full disclosure, man, we 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 chatted a little bit and we found out we have a lot of people in common, man. Yes, and sir. Yes, sir. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that, man. But I kind of just want to start by just letting the people know. You know, I don't I don't mean to be all in people's face and all that, but I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a a little bit of an introduction. You know, okay. I want to I want to tell the people that uh, for, uh, presenting to some in in introducing to others, probably very few introducing uh, to very few, but we're talking about uh, uh, Keon Howard. We're talking about jazz trumpeter. We're talking about hip hop trumpeter. And we're going <laughs> to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. But I mean, working with the likes of Jay-Z, the likes of Rihanna, Wynton Marsalis called you the future of the trumpet. You know, um, I mean, just y'all, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Let me see some hands together for my <laughs> E.R. Harold. Let me see some hands together. Yeah. How you feeling, man? Man, I'm feeling incredible, man, incredible. You know, I've been excited for this talk for a few weeks since since it came to be. Um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm feeling great. It's a beautiful day. And here we are. And here we are. Listen, listen, speaking of a beautiful day, just Sunday, there was an interesting day, a very special day for many people, especially over there in L.A. on the West Coast, you know, the Super Bowl. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Go Rams. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, it, it, and they were the favorites, and they pulled through. It was a great day for L.A., California, and the whole nine. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people are talking about outside of the, the, the phenomenal game that it was, because you literally saw that last drive, which was crazy, mm -hmm. to get to, into the end zone, but the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl halftime show. That's yes, what it sir. was. The legendary. Halftime. Absolutely legendary. Talk to me about that, man, because somebody told me that you probably worked with not <laughs> one, not two, but maybe all of the people. <laughs> In some way, some shape or form, I really have been connected to every last one of the people who were on the stage. Um, I toured with Mary um, J. Um, with Jay-Z, the Heart of the City tour back in the day. Um, recorded a record with, with Mary um, and John Legend back in the day. Um, let me see. One of my first tours was with Snoop Dogg, with my man Terrace Martin. Terrace Martin called me to go on the tour with, with, with Snoop, which was, in, which was amazing um, back, in the, back in the day. Um, Kendrick, um, again, with, with Terrace in studio. Um, who else? Is on? <laughs> Eminem, legendary, with my man Adam Blackstone, who was the the music director 
um um on Sunday. Um I worked with, with Eminem, which was which was incredible. So, you know, it's 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 locked in. Listen, he did my man from my hood that was hanging upside down. You know a little something about that brother too, fifty cent. Oh, of course. You know, um back in the day, a, a bunch of people wouldn't know that I used to well, I still do produce a lot of um music, but I used to just do beats back in the day. People used to be like, What you do? Don't you play horns? It's like, no, I do beats. Um, so I was signed to the legendary G Unit production team. Um, shout out to Shy Money and D Prosper back in the day. So I used to do a lot of music for, for 50 Cent and, and G Unit collectively, which was incredible. And it's crazy because we do, what were they on, on 31st? What street was the video? Yes, on indeed. 31st Street, 31st and 7th. So, so we, we, we were at the top of the show, I talked about things we had in common. Crazy thing is, we were at G Unit doing production at the same time, working with 50. Shout out to Shout Money, as you said, D Prosper. And you know what? Shout out to D Prosper for soul in the horn. Oh, going man. Crazy. That's going crazy. Fridays be popping. I don't know what they do it now, but I remember the beginning, and it's just going, you know, hard, you know? It is. It is. Bro, you're from Ferguson. I am. You're from Ferguson. And, you know, now nationally speaking and internationally speaking, when we think of Ferguson, you know, we think of the protests. We think of uh, Mike Brown. You know, we think of um, what they were trying to really pin on it was the riots. But, but more importantly, the protests. And you were from a very different experience from Ferguson. We, we, you're from Ferguson, so this predates all of this stuff. Take us back. What was it like growing up in Ferguson? Oh, man, Ferguson was interesting. Matter of fact, I just seen one of my friends who grew up with me, Jovan Willis. What up, professor? Um, just, man, Ferguson is interesting because most people would think, oh, my God, it's straight up hood. There's parts that was the hood. There are parts in St. Louis that are worse than Ferguson. Ferguson is actually, was actually a place to grow up, but what happened... Um, it took me a long time to realize when I moved to New York City, um, it was okay for me to walk down the street and just be cool and be myself and, and do whatever. And it was cool. If, if you didn't bother anybody, the chances are nobody was going to bother you. Um, back where I grew up at, you know, if you walking outside and the police see you, no matter what you're doing, just be ready to, to, to pull out your ID. Just be ready to if you get pulled over to get out the car and it's going to look like, you know, an episode of Cops and they just going to be asking you, you know, where you been, who you with, what you doing, you know, you got any warrants, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. And everybody I knew, you know, who looked like me pretty much had a similar, you know, incident with that kind of thing. So it was a regular thing for, for police to take it out on you, you know, just because of the way you look, unfortunately. And I didn't even know that that was an issue until I moved to New York City. Not, really? not not saying that New York City is, is the best, but it was very different from where I grew up in the Midwest, um, right. you know, which takes on more of the South part um, yeah. of the identity. So, so you were, so basically when the whole Mike Brown thing happened, you know, when his tragic uh, murder took place in cold blood, um, you weren't, you weren't surprised. This wasn't, this oh, was a man. thing. You know what? It it was surprising, but it wasn't hard to believe. You know what I'm saying? It was surprising because I'm like, yo, that's where I grew up. That's where I used to get my hair cut. You know, see the McDonald's, see the Quick Trip. That's where I used to go, you know, and, and hang out and go get, you know, whatever. You know, yeah. it was always a good vibe, good energy. You know, just that stretch of street. What most people don't know is the news can blow up something and it looked like the West Bank. You know, like it looked like a war zone, but you know that little area ain't numbered about two blocks. It's not, it's not that big, but when you look on on television, it looks like it was a war, just like chaos. You know, yeah. Well, well, you know, interestingly enough, man, that that's a that that's a a part of a bigger and long-standing movement across America, where we have been talking about police brutality. Oftentimes, uh, uh people did not believe us mm -hmm. in saying that and then came the technology in people seeing these various things and stuff like that in in uh in uh un unfortunately we didn't 
a C catch on a camera what happened with Mike Brown, that would have been that would have Man. been even more, you know, there to see that. We already know what it was. Mm -hmm. We already know what it was. Bro, speaking of Ferguson and your family, you you're from a big family, brother. It, is it sixteen? Yeah, yeah. 16, yeah, yeah, man. It's it's seventeen of us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, huge wow. family, huge music, huge family, huge music family. My my grandfather started a drum and bugle corps, which you know helped thousands and thousands of kids to 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 get off the street and to learn a um a vocation and to just grow and and, and learn artistry and learn discipline. Um, so that was in my family from the beginning. Both of my parents were in the ministry. My mom and my dad was 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 ministers. My dad still is a minister. Um, yeah, yeah. So I I come from that. All of my siblings. My brother Jay um, was a producer. We had a team called Keycap Productions that we were signed to G Unit, and we were just you know doing beats all the time. My brother Emmanuel works with Gregory Porter um, all over the world playing professional drums, and you know. Little brother John is he got that heat too. So yeah. Uh, listen, shout out, shout out to your family because usually the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. You know what I'm saying? And shout mm -hmm. out to Sean C. Shout out to Sean, Sean C. C. My brother, L V, yeah. my, my guys. He he man was he managing you? No, no, Sean C. We worked on um the Rock Boys, Jay Z's song, Rock Boys and the Winner. Let's get into it. Yeah, Let's yeah. get into it. Because listen. That is one of the hardest. Yo, I always like a beat that's hard and also melodic. Mm -hmm. and that was that. That was funky. That was hard. It was melodic, and you played horns on that. And, and were you like, like I was watching the video. Yeah, yeah. Were you in that? I am in the video. They shot it at um at the forty forty. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. That was crazy. You look back, it's, it's, his, it's history now. When it was happening, it was just happening. You look back like, that. that was legendary. Listen, listen, that's a, you know, speaking of Sean C, Sean C is from Harlem. Yes, that, sir. That, 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 that uh, American gangster, it was kind of in conjunction with, you know, uh, 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 Denzel was doing the, yeah, the, movie. the movie. about Frank Lu Lucas. What was that? Were you a part of that whole project with Jay-Z, the album? Yeah, I played on a few, few joints on there. I played on Party Life. I played on the Rock Boys and some other stuff too. Um, you know, that was an incre incredible, incredible time. Wow, wow. I mean, you know, you, you're you that guy where you know how like you watch a movie or a sitcom and the person says, let me go and get my credit card. They pull out the credit card and it's like this whole long thing. That's what the, <laughs> like, when it's told, you know, when it comes to who you worked with and what you've done, if somebody said, put, you have to put on a scroll. You know what I'm saying? Sure. As far as like who you worked with, man. So later on, I'm going to throw just a couple of names at you. Okay. And you tell me what that experience was like. We're going to get okay. to that. Okay. You went to a place where some of the most brilliant musicians have gone. You went to the new school, the new school's uh, a, a jazz. Talk yeah, about the Manage, Manage Jazz Program at the New School University. Um, an incredible, legendary place um for 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 jazz i mean my my class was like robert glasper marcus strickland and mike moreno and who else Bilal oliver um who else i mean tiambe lockhart leron thomas so many amazing amazing artists were we were all there at the same time you know um in new york city that's why i left st louis as soon as i could i'm, I'm like i'm out my dad always told me St. Louis is, you know, is it's cool, but it's a cow pastor. You got to go farther. You got to go to the world. So the minute I could, you know, got a scholarship um, to study music in New York City. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just you just ran off those names like we were in homeroom. Yo, those are some crazy names. <laughs> <laughs> you just ran Casey like, Benjamin too. Absolutely. <laughs> Shout out to Casey Benjamin as well. You know, Casey. Casey Benjamin, I want to shout out to uh, um, Nicole Gillen also. Hey, that's family. And because I went to a school that uh, some of some of those people uh, who were from New York went to right before going to the new school, which was LaGuardia High School of Performing Arts. Yes, sir. And then, you know, they went on, you know, to do that, man. But those are some brilliant, brilliant, I mean... When I say brilliant musicians, it's an understatement. You you guys 
people are gonna write books hmm. about that experience, that whole thing. There's a, I'm surprised there's not a, a a new school doc, a modern new school doc right now. It should be about you guys. It definitely should be. Roy Hargrove went there. Um, who else? Um, my oh man, uh, Brad Meldow. So many incredible, like like some of the best minds ever. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Jasmine man. Horn. But you know that I said the new school is amazing, but LaGuardia was amazing. You know, Listen, for, I, I, for, for, to, for 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 people. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to. <laughs> yeah, my my ex wife used to go there. As a matter of fact, really? so yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. man, we got to talk about that then. We got yes, to talk about indeed. that. Now I'm gonna tell you who I think might go to the new school in the future, way down the line, Riley Riley Glasper. Absolutely, Angelica Beener, of uh, Angelica Beener's son, Robert Glasper. My Riley Glasper. That guy is a little genius, and I want to say shout out to him. Shout out to Angelica. I mean, brilliant family. Family, family. Scorpio sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. very much so. Very much yeah. so. You know, so I wanted to I wanted to ask you, what was your first major gig? Like the first gig that you said, I made it. What's your first okay. major gig? Man, I got I got lucky, you know. Um my first professional touring gig was playing with Common. At the time, obviously when I moved to New York City, I only cared about, you know, straight ahead jazz. I was playing jazz, I was trying to follow follow the footsteps of the great Win Marcellus. Terrence Blanchard, I was trying to be that, you know, lead a, lead a great quintet, which is amazing. But my first call, you know, first passport, get your passport, you know, per diems and the whole nine was working with Common, you know, um, wow. which, was, which was amazing. He had just dropped the Like Water for Chocolate record, um, which was in a, a crazy time. Growing up um, in New York City at that time, going to the new school, Electric Lady Studios is right down the street. New School's on 13th Street. Electric Lady is on 8th Street. And, you know, we would go down the street and they'd be working, which was crazy because in the studio, the same time Like Water for Chocolate was happening, you got Jay Dillard who was there. You got Erica Badu working on Mama's Gun. You got D'Angelo working on Voodoo. You got Bilal working on Firstborn Second. You got all those records happening at the same time. And we would just be going back and, you know, down the street, la, 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 going to the studio. Bilal's, everybody, comments recording, walking in the, in, the, in, the, in the lobby, and you see D'Angelo, like, it's crazy. It was a crazy right. time when I really Yo, looked back. D'Angelo at that time, just, I mean, and this is not to say he doesn't have it now or before, but, it's, but that voodoo time oh, man. with D'Angelo. Like, he I had like it. Come on, man. <laughs> He had that glow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dun, dun. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And, and the thing that's crazy, man, you mentioned you mentioned Jay Dilla, bro. I mean, one of the mighty, mighty geniuses of the craft, man. Of the of the drums of of of, of black music, of African resilience, <laughs> brilliance, all yes. of that. Dilla, yes. man, the best. I never had the opportunity to work with him, but I mean, I know so many people and work with so many people who did, and his 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 brilliance is just it just radiates to this day. Man, I I was I was just I was lecturing yesterday, and I was talking about how our skin drums were outlawed uh, uh, during the time of bondage, you know, wow. physical slavery, and how you know we were. And I I, I told the the people, I said uh, they banned the skin drum because we were communicating via the drum. So I said that would be equivalent to someone taking your cell phone today. You know, you, I mean, like, you know, but but here's the thing. That spirit of communication through drums. Tell me when you listen to Dilla's joints, you can't feel the communication. Come on, you feel it. It, it go it, it, it radiates through you. It's vib the vibrations get you, man. Yes. You yes. know. Bruh, like the 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 thing that I was uh listening to one of the things that I listened to is I listened to introducing okay Keon, wow. you know, going, going okay. back to, you know going back to your first you had brother Tolliver on there yes sir John you know, Tolliver uh, legend yes yes talk That's... talk talk about talk about that ensemble you put together in your first project your first it was straight ahead okay. jazz that, that first okay. project. 
Okay, the, the first one was definitely straight ahead. And ironically, I recorded that record. I didn't tour off of it, but I recorded that record right, like pretty much the day after I got off tour with Jay-Z, which was funny, you know? <laughs> Like what? Like when I when I think about it, I've been on the road for Jay Z for months. Came home, it's like let me just get in the studio and do this. So on the drums, I had the Strickland, I had E J Strickland on drums, Marcus Strickland on on tenor sax, um, my man Charles Tolliver, legendary trumpet player, started his own label back in the day when it wasn't possible for brothers to have their own label. He was blacklisted. Um, but he, he did his own thing and he's still one of the greatest arrangers, greatest trumpet players ever to live. Um, who else was on there? My brother Emmanuel was on there. Um, Emmanuel Harold, who else? Um, Danny Grissett on piano and Desron Douglas on the bass. Um, and, and, and the crazy part, my man, Jay Most, most people would know him, associate him with Emily King, um, yeah. amazing singer, songwriter he produces a lot of music with her. So he was on there. He's one of my best friends, just an incredible, incredible musician. So man, that, that record was fun. It meant a lot. It was, it, it was like a coming of age, like, okay, get rid of that. Now it's time to move forward. I love the continuity between you being on the road with Jay doing the hip hop stuff and being able to slip right into your straight ahead jazz album. It kind of speaks to, to me, it kind of speaks to the Black experience not being a monolith. The Black oh, experience, you know what I mean? Like the Black experience being a gumbo. I mean, you got down there, you got Bill Street. You know, you had the uh, uh, St. Louis Blues, and oh my God, WC, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And you got Chicago, and you got, you got, obviously you got New Orleans, and you got Detroit, you got it, you got it all. Going straight, going up that Mississippi River, it was so much culture. So much fertile, fertileness, man. Yes, yes. That the, the Mississippi River is like the Nile of America when, when it comes to that. Like, you know, yes, talk, talk about the continuity between hip hop and jazz. How are you, you able to speak those two languages so fluently back to back like that? That's a great question. And the way I see it, man, you know, it ain't number 12 notes. Um, mm. The only thing that really separates the genre is the actual beat. You know, I heard that's what Quincy said, and it makes perfect sense to me. Um, the thing is, when you have a voice and you have a, a, a creative um, vocabulary that's yours, that's unique, it will translate. So I really believe that. So if it's me working with, you know, whoever, um, you know, the Strickland brothers, or, or it could be Herbie Hancock, it could be whatever, you know. Um, if I bring what I have, it's going to be like a pot. It's going to be like a gumbo. You know, I'm not, I'm not really scared of, oh, my God, it's classical music. Oh, my God, it's jazz, because I've studied. And I've, I've checked out a lot of different things and, you know, been around a lot of different people where it's like, I feel like now I can say what it is that I want to say. Just like I can have a conversation, like, verbally with anybody. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you're white, black, Chinese, triangle, circle, it don't matter what you are. We can speak, we can communicate. And musically, it's the same um, for me, the way I see it. Some people, they, they create these boundaries and they create these lines. Oh, oh my God, since you're playing jazz, you can't play hip hop, you can't play R&B, you can't, you can't rock out, but it's all coming from the same, the same, um, the same pot. It's, it's coming from the same roots. You know what I'm saying? The same black music, the same experiences. A lot of them, most of them are. So it's yeah. like we can communicate and we can talk and we can we can vibe out. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was um shout out to my mentors, man, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. You know, oh man, I was it, 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 my, Minneapolis, Minneapolis legends. I, yeah, <laughs> all the way at the top, <laughs> all the way at the top. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking to Terry and I said, you know, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, what genre did Prince see himself as? Man. And he said, we never talked about it. It, was, it. it wasn't even a thing. Good you know, music I, is the genre. Music is the genre. And that's one of, Prince is absolutely one of your, uh, the people that you look up to and inspire you. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Hundred yeah. percent. I was I, I was I was blessed. I never recorded with Prince, but I did jam out with him a couple of times. 
What? At, pa what? At, pa at Paisley Park. Woo! Yeah, yeah, at Paisley Park and a couple of spots because Common and, 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 and Prince had, you know, hooked up. And you know the song, The Light Was Out. The Light is in a major key. Prince loved the fact that The Light was a hit, but it was in a major key because most are not. So he was he was into that, and I re I remember the first time we jammed at Paisley Park, Prince was introducing a new up and coming young girl who played the piano who had just put out this album called Songs in the Key. Alicia Keys, Alicia Keys, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> and when you think when I look back in retrospect, I just be like, damn, this is 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 crazy how this history works, man crazy and i've been blessed to be a part of so much and be around so much of of of, of the greatness that that has happened listen man paisley park i, I love to tell the story quickly about <clears throat> we went there and i went there with terry mm -hmm. and we at paisley park and they were having a session and uh terry gets up there terry starts you know doing this thing and it was all these legends you know you know in the jam session and terry was like yo you know this is my guy you know what I'm saying? She's like, so we're doing it, and so Prince comes, Mars Day calls Prince onto the stage, and I love this story because Prince comes onto the stage to join the, the jam session. Yo, and he looked at every instrument. He, he took a moment to, like, look at <laughs> like He looked at the drums, he looked at the bass, he looked at the piano, he looked at the, and he was, and I was like, bro, he's trying to figure out which one he feels like playing today. See? Man. <laughs> See, that's a whole nother level, man. That's whole a whole nother, nother level, level, man. Speaking of Prince, I had um, I had uh, Will I Am on my show. Uh, uh, Wow, T L Cross. Shout out to uh, Leotis Clyburn, Kim James. Wow. And yes. Oh, Leotis Clyburn. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know. But what happened was we 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 had Will I Am on there. Will I Am talked about Michael hanging with. He was hanging with Michael. And they went and Prince was performing somewhere, you know, and he was so, you know, friends of both of them and stuff like that. So I want to segue. I want to segue into Michael Jackson, because oh. Michael Jackson, he was working on a tour, you know, when he when, when, when he met his untimely demise. Yeah. Um, am I right? That tour turned into the immortal uh, Michael Jackson, immortal world tour. Immortal World Tour, the Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, you were a part of that. I was a part of that. With with uh, man, that was a crazy <laughs> scenario. I went on tour for like close to four years um, with Cirque du Soleil. Um, the music director was the great Greg Fillin Gaines, who was on Off the Wall, who was on all Michael Jackson stuff. My man, shout out to G Feezy. Um, he called me one day, and I can remember sitting down. It was a Sunday. And I was sitting down with my son, and he was like, yo, you want to join the circus? I was like, what? Come on, man, stop playing with me, man. Eddie Murphy said, I'm not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. So I'm like, bro, what you, what you talking about? He's like, yo, join the circus. So I did, and it was, you know, the, the Michael Jackson Immortal World Tour. Um, Michael Jackson was always um, totally... Um, blown away by Cirque du Soleil and he had wanted to work with them. So the next best thing from the family was they felt was to to really make that dream a reality. So they um, partnered up with Cirque du Soleil and that tour is still going on in Vegas. It's different now. The one we did was an arena tour. Now they do it um, in a staged kind of way. But that was one of the most incredible experiences, some of the most talented people that I've ever ran against you got gymnasts you got people who do parkour you got you know dancers and you know the 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 dancers who were choreographing michael jackson travis and so many others um the talladega brothers it was just like unbelievable man seriously bro that that is that is just and i saw that man I mean, oh you saw this you came to the show yeah brilliant Br no doubt <laughs> I got, I'm Dang, you. bro see <laughs> Yes, a hundred percent. I'm saying, yo, you know, it it, it kind of happened because with you, you know, you know, you're you're legendary in your own right. But we're talking about you. We just gotta hop from legend to legend. You know what I'm saying? Man. I mean, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna okay. go right into Miles Davis. See, Damn. you 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 came up. Uh, stop me from wrong. 
you came up being heavily inspired by Miles in his second quintet. Yeah, I mean, I would say all of them. I would say just Miles, just Miles Davis as an entity. As an entity, because you know, I, I always, one of my favorite albums of all time is the Kind of Blue album, all That's time. Rare. That's the quintessential jazz album that anybody trying to get into jazz, anybody want to hear what it's like at its most, you know, um, great point, the most simple, the most easy to stomach, you know, it's like if you if you like if you want Jamaican food, what what would you tell somebody to get? Yeah, yo, you, you want to go to that mom and pop? You want to go to the mom and pop, and you want to get get you some rice and peas, get you some right. get right. you some jerk chicken, go easy, cool. Absolutely, that's what kind of blue is to somebody coming into the fold of of love and jazz. It has it has everything. There's virtuosity. There's amazing songs. There's the quintessential saxophone player, the quintessential trumpet player, um, quintessential alto and tenor sax player. Alto just, and tenor. You know, and just, just, the, just the idea of the ensemble. So much greatness to that record. But Miles, going back to Miles, his ability to put things in sequence people, sequence people, you know, oh. put groups together, put bands together, second to none. Mm. Second to none. So that's the to me. That's why his ability to, um, I mean, he was the ultimate music chef. He yeah. put them things together, put them ingredients together, man. So I grew up listening to Miles. I'm from St. Louis. Miles from East St. Louis. But you know, when you play, you play in St. Louis. So Miles grew up around my um, my cousin Eddie Randall had a big band. It was one of Miles's first gigs. So, which is which is crazy, goes all the way back. So, Miles is all the way up here in my book, yeah. you know. So, seriously, as a trumpet player, as an artist, as a person who wants to get my vision out to the world, as a person who likes fashion, Miles did it all, yeah. you know. Let's 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 stop right here for a second because okay. I want to talk about the movie, but I like what you said. You you okay. talked about his ability to sequence people, to put certain things together. That is a very, I feel, underrated ingredient in jazz as a leader. Mm -hmm. Knowing the proper uh, textures, knowing the proper ingredients to put together. And you, you can even go back to the, uh, the big band days where they had mm -hmm. to put a whole section together. You talked about your, uh, you know, your family. You know, and Miles and those guys, a lot of those guys originally came out of the big band. Yes, indeed. And then went into the smaller group and they took that thinking. You know, it's like the CEO. It's, it's like you're a musician, but 100%. you're hundred percent CEO, producer, executive producer. You do, that That is wild, man. Bro, you know what? What's funny is a friend of mine who's a, um, a CEO, um, venture capitalist kind of guy, um, you know, mentor of mine. We were speaking one day and I was telling him, he was like, yeah, so what's your day look like? And it was like, okay, do the social media stuff. You got to do, I got to, you know, get the tickets for the band. I got to do this. I got to do that. got to do that. He was like, bro, you are CEO. It's wow. like, I was like, I never really looked at it. I just looked at yeah. it as just doing stuff. But then, that, doing, you know, it. exactly. So you, you a hundred percent on the money. You know, Man, um, we gotta go to the Grammy. We gotta go to the okay. Grammy because okay. because wait, 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 before we get to the Grammy, let me tie it in. You 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 came up. You you got two. You got East St. Louis. You got St. Louis. Like you said, when you play, it's just St. Louis. Mm. St. Louis in the house. You have Miles Davis. We talked about what you extracted from Miles Davis. Listening to Miles Davis, seeing what he seeing what he did, seeing what he put together, how he played. Here you are, years later, Don Cheadle is playing Miles Davis mm -hmm. in the movie Miles Ahead. Don Cheetah would lift the saxophone, I mean, I'm sorry, saxophone, lift the trumpet to his mouth in what would come out, what we would hear, because I was right there in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, yeah, I was there. But when, you, when he lifted the trumpet to his mouth, what came out was Keon Harrell. Yeah. Talk about that. But first of all, First of all, let's put our hands together for that because that's, that's kind of crazy. So you're playing, you're playing, you're Miles. 
yeah. right? You know, through 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 the person of your own artistry and through the whole film. Talk about that experience. How'd that come about? What was that like, man? Man, that was an amazing experience, bro. Um, that came about um again, my brother Robert Glasper got the call to score the movie. And he called me because he knew I, I I guess he he believed that I could get it done. So, you know, obviously him talking to many of the the powers that be, the Miles Davis estate and so many other people, you know, it was like, you know what, let's give them a shot. So we played and we did this demo and they sent the demo back and it fooled people. It thought people they thought it was like the quintet. What? So, you know, that that's that's the way it started. And from that, it was just like they trusted me to basically to make Don's fingers sound like what Miles would have played. You know, one of the most interesting things about that role was, you know, typically on a, in a piano, you can see, okay, you can see each note, that's a D, that's an E or whatever. And a trumpet is not like that. So when you see Don Cheadle doing like this, it's not an act, it's like, it's not a random thing. That was random what he was doing. But I had to make each one of him, his fingers like this, make a note, make it sound, but make it sound like Miles Davis. So make it, you know, I had to look at his face. So in the context, that's what my my production and my editing knowing Pro Tools helped. Because if I would have had to do that with somebody else, that would have been crazy. So I did this, you know, in my own studio, like, you know, maybe like eight. Like if you watch that movie again, I know I'm kind of rambling. You watch no, no, the no. You watch you need the all movie. Of this. You need all of this. If you watch the movie, you'll see Don playing. So every time he play, the phrase with his fingers, imagine that I did eight different runs of each one of those. That that I looked at his face. I looked at, you know, the emotion that he was showing. I looked at the emotion of, of what the screen was portraying. So all of those things were happening at the same time. So to make it make sense, because sometimes you'll see those movies and you'll see that people just, you know, they just put somebody in there and the music is doing whatever. But since it was Miles Davis, I'm like, man, this has to be right. So every time Don, fin Don fingers something, it's the correct note. Like as a trumpet player, you could play it back. Oh, you, uh, my mind is blown, first of all. Let me, let me, let's start there. Um, bro, that is crazy. I hope. Y'all who are watching this, I hope y'all are following what he just <laughs> said. That right there is nuts. It is really, that's brilliant, man. That is brilliant. And you know, I wondered that. I wondered um, how that process happened because, you know, I grew up, one of my all-time favorite movies is Mo' Better Blues. Legendary. Come on. <laughs> my Legendary to this day. Shout to out this. to Terrence Blanchard. Shout out to Terrence Blanchard, man, and Branford, and you know, um, did 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 Winford did did, did um did did, did Winton do um uh was there one particular song that Winton played on? Yeah, yeah, the one when when um when he gets beat up. When he gets beat up. That's what I yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, that's Winton going nuts. That's Winton go okay going okay. crazy. Yes, yes, that's what I thought, man. I mean, you know, shout out to Bill Lee, man. Shout out to Bill Lee. Shout know. out to Bill Lee. And, you know, and Spike, of course, and Spike. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, there was a moment that I witnessed um, in the Brick Building, and there was a jam session that man. took place in the movie at the end. In the jam session, I mean, you had Herbie Hancock, you had Wayne Shorter, you had Ryan Glass, Bronza. You know, you had that whole thing. I was there with Angelica Bina, and wow. it was, I was just, I mean, just in between takes, just mm -hmm. catch the, if, if somebody just noodled a little bit, I was like, whoo! You know <laughs> that was crazy, man. It's Gary Clark Jr., especially, I mean, just the people who, who they arranged to be there. Gary Clark Jr., um, Esperanza Spaulding. Robert Glasper, Herbie, Wayne Shorter, all in the same place. Antonio Sanchez, man, that was incredible. I mean, that was crazy. In 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 you, in, in which brings me to the Grammy, because that whole ordeal, man. You know, I just want to, you know, give you guys a round of applause for the work that you all did in being recognized. Mm -hmm. You know, for that yeah. Grammy.
that was that was incredible incredible feat that that yeah. that movie got got the got the grammy for that that year it's unbelievable bro man uh so i joked around at the top and i said jazz trumpeter i said some some might say the hip hop trumpeter <laughs> now why would i say such a thing what what what, what am i getting at when i say the hip hop trumpeter why does that fit you so well? Let them know why. You know, you know why it fits me so well? And it's not even something that I've tried to do or anything like that. It just is what it is. You know, I've, I've recorded and have records with Nas. I have re recorded and have records with Jay-Z, Mac Miller, Common. Um, work with Mos Def. Work with Talib Kweli. Work with, I mean, Pharaoh Munch. Work with Mob Deep. Work with... 50 Cent and LL, like all of all of these people, I've been blessed to, you know, to just be in, be in the room. And it's unbelievable. Like, it is what it is. And it's not anything that's contrived. It's not me coming in as a session musician or something like that. It's like we working, you know, and which, which is, has been a beautiful thing. From touring, from, touring with Eminem, touring with, you know, touring with Jay. It's just like, man, it just happened <laughs> like that. You know, listen, I'm going to throw some names out there and just just in one, I guess, phrase or okay. some, uh, tell me what comes to mind. What was that experience like? I'll just throw names out there. Well, let, let, let's start with uh, let's start with let's start with Jay-Z. Let's start with Jay. Jay, I mean, we got that. First of all, that was probably did I audition for that? I had two auditions in my life. One was with Common, yeah. and one was with Jay-Z. And the rest, of, every other gig is no auditions. Um, from that, it was like, we, we did the record. We worked with, again, with Sean C and LV um, and Puff. We were on yeah. tour with, I didn't even mention Puff. We were yeah. on tour with Puff, so we ended up in the studio. Me and my man, Kenneth Wellam, and my man, Sonda Sermon. Um, we ended up cutting those horns. And from that, it just led forward. Working with Jay is just like the ultimate pinnacle of greatness. You know, mm. swag, the idea of, yo, you better be tight. You know, James mm. Brown would be like, you know, <laughs> don't fuck up. Jay-Z is the <laughs> same way, you know, because he, cause he going to come in on point. He wants you to be on point, you know. Yeah. So just seeing that, just seeing the swag from the stage, you know, to off stage to just chilling mm. was always a vibe. Mm. Mm -hmm. I throw out I throw out a name like um well you know what I want to congratulate Rihanna on being oh she's uh -huh. expecting man you know her her and ASAP Rocky you know put my hands together for yep, them indeed uh, yeah you know they black love you know what I'm saying beautiful but what 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 was uh I throw that name out there Rihanna yo that was listen Rihanna was probably one of my the funnest tours I've worked on working with her because the tour it was Eminem and Rihanna, um, the Monster Tour, um, which which was incredible. She's the type of person who come in and greet everybody, talk to everybody, want to know, you know, make sure everybody's cool, and then we'll work. You know, she was super cool. And as a matter of fact, the thing with Mike Brown when he was killed in St. Louis, I was actually on tour with Rihanna, and she signed a sweatshirt back in the day. I remember that, which wow. was crazy. Full was circle. Crazy. Full circle. When I when I think about it, I never even now remember. Um, but Rihanna's just super down to earth, but super dope, man. She get up and do um diamonds, bruh. Crazy. <laughs> just 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 amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yo, when you last night, last night there was a versus. Yeah. You know, uh versus with uh my guy, music soul child, uh Anthony Hamilton. You know, he had like some guests in there. I mean, you know, Eric Robeson. He brought Eric Robeson in there. I was, I was so happy to see Eric Robeson. I love, I, yeah, I love E man. Like, I was very proud to see him. You know, um, Robert Glasper. You know, he brought, you know, music brought uh, him out. But you know, you were a part of a versus as well. You were a part yeah. of the the, the legendary D'Angelo. <laughs> yeah. Talk yeah. about it, man. Like that's that. That's not regular. Let, Bro. Let's be clear. This is not regular. So Come on, man. It. Listen, <laughs> the verses with D'Angelo is crazy because, again, it's only probably one person that you would ever put up 
against D'Angelo. It's probably Maxwell. I work with both of them. But right. D, um, he was just ready to just do it himself. So he brought me out um, to, to, to play a tune with him, which is cool. Um, I, I toured with the Vanguard with, with D, and just he's just a special, a special dude. I could just go back to the rehearsals with D'Angelo, man. You know, he'd come in, be midnight, and we would just jam for like two hours, and then it'd be done. And I'm talking not not just like okay, let's play like jamming. Like I wish I had rehearse. I wish I had the rehearsal footage. I'm, I imagine it's somewhere, but just the energy and the love and the soul and the, and and the seriousness and the dedication of the way he approached music is again, like you say, Terry. We'll um we'll pick up, we'll look at whatever instrument. D'Angelo same way, mm. whether it's the mm. keys, whether it's the guitar, whatever. He, he he grew up playing the saxophone, <laughs> which is crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, Dean's just a just a special, just a you know, just a sponge of dopeness, man. Wow, I may have known that, but not. But you saying that it's like it's it's like in the back of my mind. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that that he, D'Angelo is extremely unique, man. I mean, you know, I want to I want to jump into the magician. I want to jump into the edition. This is your 2017 project that I love so much. You know, I mean, this right here, this is black culture. And, and when I say black culture, I mean national, I mean international, global, because mm -hmm. that's what black culture is. I'm um, from a Pan-African perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, you had that that down home flavor, you had that jazz flavor, you had that blues flavor, that hip hop flavor, that reggae flavor, that, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. Africanisms, you know, mm -hmm. and those kind of things. All of these stories were told and then you actually even got into the socially conscious. But I want to start here though. Okay. First and foremost, anybody who, anybody who can, once you log off, listen to that album. Listen to that album. If you haven't already, you know, many of y'all probably already have it. Listen to that. When it when it starts, man, I want to talk about I want to I want to talk about voice I want to talk about voicemail, you know, you know you have you have this this song, uh, beautiful, beautiful. I was in tears. Oh man, I was in tears listening because let me tell you this, my very favorite poem in the whole world is Langston Hughes Mother to Son. Wow. It, it's the, it's the, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't stop now. You know, don't get tired. Don't sit down the stage, you know, keep going. Mm -hmm. That is my very favorite poem ever. Wow. And I have a special relationship with my mom, you know, my family, my dad as well. But this right here was one of the most beautiful things that I've come across in music form. Talk about vo voicemail. Man, voicemail is the, ultra, it's definitely the most special song that I've ever done. Um, for a lot of different reasons, and most people wouldn't know because it's not really anywhere. First of all, during this song, um, when I was going about it, my mom ended up in the hospital. She had a heart attack, and you know she was basically put under for a while. We didn't know if she was going to make it. Um, and the same time, I, I was she had sent me this voicemail. I mean, she sent me a lot of voicemails. I have a lot of voicemails from my mom. She was just that kind of person. Um, but they were all perfect. But this one was just like straight down. It was like she did it, and that's what it was. And it was yeah. so perfect that I'm like, man, I got to put music to that. So yeah. that's, you know, that's what happened. Um, like eight of my siblings are on the song. If you listen back again, you'll hear the people singing. Those are my siblings. Um and my brother Emmanuel's on the drums. Um, it's, um, I don't know, it's just my mom's message to me to keep going, to keep pushing, no matter what. The world is gonna, the world ain't nice all the time. Everybody ain't nice, everybody ain't your friends, but just know that you have the core, you have the values that we've instilled in you to just push forward, to, to keep believing, to keep trusting, and to know that there's something better. And you're gonna be all right. So every time, you know, I, every time I do a show, I play that song first because it kind of sets the tone. Mama Shirley lays it down. I mean, since then, my mom has passed away, but I had the opportunity to play that song for her before she passed away, um, which was which is crazy. And she loved it. And it was what it was. She smiled. And I mean, if you knew her, 
then and if if you knew it then you would know it would just it would just line up um but yeah yeah voicemail is just one of those things and it, and, and it's dedicated to you know anybody going through and it's something that that people can listen to and just rock with just for inspiration you know and for no matter what she her my mom was i mean again she births she birthed 15 kids on her own mm. no no tuplets just all single you know and she lost two she could have had more so mm. um but she was just that kind of person um you know she helped the 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 in the ministry she, you know people our phone was like a hotline you know she mm. was praying for people and just doing things you know giving people things you know taking care of people taking people in she was just that kind of person and this message just basically solidifies the kind of person who she was the kind of word that i i i got to hear you know my entire life yeah yeah man i i, I salute you for that you know and i just want to i just want to tell you anybody who listens to this you're going to get something out of it because i know i did i listened to that and it was like it was wisdom coming from a mother but the thing that was crazy is the accent, the, the, the way she spoke, the texture of her voice, man, it, that's, that's mother. That's mother right there. That's black mother. Yeah. That's a love. Yes, right indeed. Well, and it's, with, man, and it's, it's words to live by, man. And that's an, that's more than a song. That's an experience. And that's why I wanted to talk first about that. Not only just because of chronologically, but, 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 that stood out to me. It jumped out as more than a song, as more uh, of an experience, man. And, and, and moving, talking about beauty, man, you know, that song, you know what I'm saying? The beauty, you know, uh, her beauty, mm -hmm. that is one of the most beautiful compositions that I've heard. What? But yes, man. Yes, bro. Appreciate that is that, a bro. beautiful. Com I'm a composition person, right? Mm -hmm. So listen, I love syncopation, beats, musicianship, funk. I love all of that. I love mm -hmm. grit. I love the. But if you can get, if you can somehow find a way to put beauty in there, this is why I love Stevie so much. There you know it what is. I'm saying? There it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, um, talk about that composition, her beauty. Man, that came about. I did that a minute ago. I, um. You know, then I then I I, I re sequenced it. Um, I was I actually did that in the kitchen, literally. You know how we always be like we cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> literally, I had my for some reason I had my setup on my um on my what do you call it <laughs> countertop countertop. <laughs> um, I literally had an MPC twenty five hundred. Pro Tools, everything for some reason, microphone, everything just set up on the counter. That's how that. That's how that started, um, originally. But you know, I got Farrell Monch on there. I got Terrence Martin is on there. Um, what else is on there? My brother Jay is on there. No, I'm on some production as well. Um, but just you know, you talk about the idea of, of making beats. You know how it is. Is you you do the track and you can send it to somebody and then you produce it. So it's it's the same yeah. way. Um, it's like I have this idea. I, I had to to totally get the subject. It started off as her beauty through my eyes, but then I actually wrote what that meant, and it talked about basically meeting the most perfect person um, mm -hmm. who is better to you than you could be to yourself, and that's something that we can all you know aspire to get to. I haven't figured it out yet. You know, wow. but it's, it, at some point maybe it'll it'll, it'll come. You yeah. know, but yeah. no, that, you know, that's, that's a... for for me, I, I I use composition as 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 my um basis. It can be a basis of faith. It can it can call the things that are not as they were. Um, I I believe that. Um, it's 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 magic in it. That's the reason why I named the album the Musician. It's music and 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 magic. Um, so you know. That came from that. That's a whole nother story that came from Don Cheadle. Um, we were talking about the Miles Davis movie. Um, and he was like, Key, what you did for the movie is magical, man. Since you're a magician and you're a musician, you're the musician. So that's how that came about. Wow. Yeah. Yo, 
that was my next question. You literally answered my next question because I was going to say, well, you know, what was up with the spelling of, you know, yeah, musician? Yeah. But, you know, that, that was going to be my question. But wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, music is really, uh, you know, it can be looked at as making something appear mm -hmm. that previously didn't exist until you gave it life. Exactly. You know I mean? We're shamans of sound. That's the way I think about it. You know, literally, it, it didn't exist before you vibrated, you know, I don't know, the drum machine or the, the metal from the mouthpiece, whatever it is. It's like this is something that's being created in the moment now that is yeah. going to resonate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. What else? It's a, a lot of things happening. A lot of, a lot of good things. New music coming very, very soon. Um. Yeah, new music. I was, I was gonna ask you about the music. I was it's gonna coming. Say, have a project coming. What's up? It's coming. I'm I'm in the studio every day, um, working on the, on the, on a new joint. Um, again, going back to the idea of composition, like you're talking about, for me, and you said it, and I've never heard it said the way you you said it about the the idea of of composition. You know, since like it's like I could produce a track and and send somebody to beat. And that's what it is. Or, you know, you go deep in it, go deep in it. For me, it's like I got the improvisation on the top. Then I got the actual groove. Then I got the harmony happening. Then I have the, the vocals happening. Then it might be the strings. So it's, it's super layered. And it, it, it takes me a little bit more time because I want it all. <laughs> and you said, yo, listen, and we're glad that you got it all because you have string, you have strings in here, man. You have the horns in here. You have... I mean, and it's not always very common. The strings that you put in your stuff, it makes it extremely cinematic. It makes hey, it cinematic. That's what but it is. That's what I'm saying. The thing that's crazy is it's cinematic without taking the, the that grit out mm -hmm. of it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Without, without that authenticism, you know what I'm saying, that comes from there, you know, and then you have those those strings, those beautiful sounding strings, and nothing suffers. See, they, they, mm -hmm. they, they're occupying the perfect spaces. Man. You know, they, they can live. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, yes. man, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, man. I just want to say, first and foremost, thank you, man, for stopping oh, by. My pleasure, man. Incredible. 